Oh boy, do I have ideas for how Disney can utilize the Disney princesses they established in their live-action adaptations, so strap in. Some people see these Disney live-action adaptations as more complex expansions of the original animated movies, as well as grand celebrations of their legacies, and others see them as absolutely pointless. While I do agree that something literally shot for shot the same as the animation with no new additions or interesting explorations, like the 2019 Lion King, is quite pointless, but I think others like The Jungle Book, Aladdin, Cinderella, not only bring the animated films to life in an exciting way, but bring something new to their legacies and honor them beautifully. I think the best way to universally justify ever having retold the stories in live action in the first place is to have them be starting off points for new, original stories and movies featuring the beloved characters in live action. So basically, sequels and spin-offs and whatnot that build a cinematic universe in the vein of Marvel Studios, which is also owned by Disney, but with actual Disney characters this time instead of Marvel superheroes. One film in particular I would love to see is one featuring the lineup of live-action Disney princesses that has been built through these adaptations. Lily James's Cinderella from 2015 Cinderella, Emma Watson's Belle from 2017's Beauty and the Beast, Naomi Scott's Jasmine from 2019's Aladdin, Liu Yafei's Mulan from 2020's Mulan, Halle Bailey's Ariel from the upcoming Little Mermaid, and possibly Elle Fanning's Aurora from Maleficent. I say possibly because Maleficent isn't an adaptation of Sleeping Beauty so much as a twist on the story, but people seem to like her in the role, so why not have her there and pretend like Disney never tried to tell us Maleficent, the greatest Disney villain of all time, was actually a good guy. Anywho, given how incredibly lucrative, popular, and pretty much essential in a child's upbringing the Disney princesses are, we've never had a movie revolving around them as the central focus, and we've only seen them together recently in Ralph Breaks the Internet, and their presence in that movie actually did break the internet because people were so excited. So I definitely hope Disney explores the idea of giving us a movie or TV series revolving around the animated Disney princesses, but I think bringing together the live-action incarnations of those characters could be really exciting, and like I said, justify having established them in live-action versions of the stories that have already been told. Imagine how awesome it would be to have these beloved characters in the flesh, together, interacting, on the big screen. Now I'm going to get into my ideas of where I think the film should go story-wise and such, but first, I got stuff to say. If you haven't read about the Mulan actress Liu Yafei's controversy with supporting the Hong Kong police and their brutality, that's something huge that a lot of people are upset about. I personally think she was forced into saying it because the government in China has a history of doing this sort of thing, but I don't know if this controversy is something Disney wants to deal with again, so maybe they should recast the role of Mulan. I would not be opposed because, first of all, the live-action Mulan sucked in my opinion, and second, I really did not vibe with her as Mulan. She was too soft and without any charisma, I really just did not see Mulan within her, so yeah, a recast would be okay by me. No offense to anyone who likes the casting and the movie. So how would you get all these characters together in a movie, especially because they exist all within different time periods? Thankfully, they're all fantasy movies that can involve magic and time travel. If Marvel and the Avengers can bring together characters from different time periods and galaxies, Disney proper certainly can. And yes, while they're all probably set in different periods, they're also fairy tale movies that blend different eras together to create a timeless once upon a time era. So even though each film mostly leans towards a specific time period, they're all quite fluid and exist in a fantasy world where time doesn't really matter. But let's just say they're set in different time periods. They can use magic. Okay, here's where the plot comes in. Remember that pointless addition in the live-action Beauty and the Beast? The magical traveling book that can transport you anywhere, yet it was only used one time and forgotten? Even when Belle was crunching for time, trying to get back to her village where her father was in trouble, 
Yeah, seems like a wasted opportunity. Well, let's justify it and make it an essential tool of our ideal Disney princess movie. Okay, so Belle, who is now the matriarchal head of her kingdom, ruling alongside the non-beast beast, uses the magical book to travel to Cinderella's kingdom, where Cinderella is the ruler alongside Kit. And the two not only meet up to discuss policies and ideas to make their kingdoms and the world better, but they are also really good friends who hang out quite often. Meanwhile, Lady Tremaine, aka Cinderella's wicked stepmother, is a distraught woman banished from Cinderella's kingdom. She wants to seek revenge on Ella for humiliating her and forcing her into the terrible life she is living. While trying to figure out how to get revenge, she discovers that in her bloodline, deep back in her ancestry, there was an evil, powerful, dark fairy called Maleficent. This would be cool because the same actress voiced both Lady Tremaine in the original animated Cinderella and Maleficent in the original animated Sleeping Beauty, so this would be a full circle moment. And the two characters are very similar in their graceful wickedness. One just happens to have magical powers and the other doesn't. So yeah, Tremaine has Maleficent in her ancestry. Maleficent can be played by Angelina Jolie, even though this movie is retconning 2014's Maleficent because it told us that she wasn't evil and I'm not about that. So after Lady Tremaine makes this discovery, she feels as if Maleficent is the key to her revenge on Cinderella, through which she wants to take Cinderella's power and rule the kingdom herself. She has limited resources and information, so she must sneak into the library located in Ella's castle to dig into the history of Maleficent and such. She sneaks in, does her research, and on her way out, she walks by a room in which Ella's fairy godmother is doing cool tricks with magic for Ella's baby. She watches and hides until the fairy godmother leaves the room with the baby, but leaves her wand, and the stepmother picks it up, knowing she has found her gateway to revenge. She uses the wand to go back in time and team up with Maleficent, telling her that together they can have all the power in the world. Aurora, who may or may not be played by Elle Fanning, discovers Tremaine and Maleficent's evil plan and uses the magic of her three fairies to send a message to Ella's kingdom to warn her. Ella knows that Belle will be of use in helping them, so they seek help from her, and being the bookworm she is, Belle knows that Maleficent is one of the most wicked fairies of all time. Belle also knows that the fairy godmother's wand is hella powerful, so together they're dangerous. But if they utilize Belle's magical transportation book, they can travel to different times and locations to retrieve the three objects that can overpower the evil forces that Maleficent and Lady Tremaine will unleash with fairy godmother's wand. Those three objects are the magic lamp from Princess Jasmine's kingdom, King Triton's trident from Ariel's kingdom, and an ancient magic sword that is hidden somewhere by Mulan's village. If they can get all these magical items, they can defeat the evil. So they use the magical transportation book to not only join forces with the other princesses, but to retrieve all the objects. After all the objects are retrieved, they go back to Cinderella's castle and prepare for the attack. But Maleficent's raven Diablo does some spying and discovers their plan and informs Lady Tremaine and Maleficent who decide to build a magical army and sneak attack. They also travel to Ariel's kingdom to turn Prince Eric, King Triton, and other possible alliances to the Disney princesses into stone. They do the same in Jasmine's kingdom, turning Aladdin and Genie and Dahlia into stone. Meanwhile, the princesses are training to fight. They have all their sidekicks, Jasmine has her magic carpet and pet tiger Raja, Aurora has her fairies, Mulan has her pet dragon Mushu. I don't care if Mushu wasn't in the live action Mulan and there was a phoenix instead, Mulan needs her pet dragon. I don't think he should talk unless they can really pull it off, but he needs to be there. He's too essential to Mulan, which the live action movie clearly did not understand. In their training preparation, there could be some fun moments, like a scene where Mulan starts wielding her sword and doing a bunch of insane tricks, and Cinderella looks at Belle and is like, you won't find me doing that, 
because I don't think all of these princesses should be wearing armor and wielding swords because that's not necessarily what makes a strong female character. There is strength and femininity and women don't have to take on masculine traits to be seen as strong because there are other ways to prove strength. Of course, Ella and Belle are well versed in horse riding and such so they can train Ariel, Jasmine and Aurora on that while Jasmine teaches them how to ride the magic carpet, and Belle can teach them certain defense tactics she read in books, and Ariel can practice using her father's trident, and Mulan does teach them all basic fighting skills because they're gonna need them. Maleficent and Lady Tremaine and their army of magical creatures unexpectedly attack during a stormy, snowy night, and the battle commences. There's lots of Mulan kicking ass, Aurora and her fairies using magical defenses, Ariel using the trident which isn't as powerful when not being used by King Triton, Ella is riding a horse and is about to be attacked by creatures, so Mulan throws her sword to Ella and despite Ella saying she was not going to be wielding a sword, she does because she has no choice. At some point, Maleficent turns into a dragon and the fairies use their magic to make Mushu grow to her size. So the two dragons have a fight, eventually the villains are defeated and somehow captured in the magic lamp and all is well. And I think there's just so much potential for epicness and of course I would want there to be sequels where more Disney princesses join like Snow White, Tiana, Rapunzel, etc etc. This would be so exciting and I would love to see it. Or if they didn't want to just do Disney princesses and do all the Disney characters in general, they could do a Kingdom Hearts movie or a Magic Kingdom movie. So yeah, what do you think? What would you want to see? Let me know. Bye.